After Buzzers, we are really excited because we are bringing you the best panel for Girl Boss. Now, after only being in business for about 10 years, Maria, I'm sorry, Sophia Amorosa, she turned what was a business on eBay into a multi million dollar fashion empire. We're going to get to it right now. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Girls, we run this mother. 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 Who run the world? Girls, who run the world? Girls. Because it is so powerful yes. to be a girl, a girl boss. girl boss. Yes. So, ladies, yes. what does it mean to be a girl boss to you? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. For me, girl boss is all about the attitude. Wait, it's hold on. Who you, are oh. you? Tell Hi. me who you are. <laughs> I am Dominique, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Dominique Sarita. And our lovely host. Yes, of course. <laughs> I am Miss Canterbury, guys. And listen, we're really, really excited to be here. You can find me on Instagram at Miss Canterbury and on Twitter at Sweet Kendora TV. Hey, everyone. My name is Mina Wahab. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mina Makes Magic. Hey, peeps. So this is my very first after show. I'm over Woo! the moon excited. Over the moon excited. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dinner Party CHGO. My name is Elizabeth Alfano, and I'm like the only one still on Facebook, but you can find me there too <laughs> at Elizabeth with a Y S Alfano. So, uh, what is a girl boss? Yes. Well, first of what all, is a girl boss? You ladies are girl bosses. Yes. But besides that, to me, a girl boss is anybody who lives life on their own terms. And we're going to let Ooh, guys maybe do that, that too if yes. they want to. But yes. yeah, totally life on their own terms. And that's why I loved watching this show. You know, our, our <laughs> heroine there, Sophia, she kind of rocks the boat like... Am I going to make it? Is life going to keep me down or am right. I going to champion? And these first couple episodes are all about like her rocking the boat and like is she going to make it or not? And right. I love it. Uh, yeah. And for me, Girl Boss is definitely all about the attitude. It's about being fearless of whatever you want to do in life and really taking that ownership mm -hmm. of your life. You know, no one can tell you nothing. It's when your dreams coincide with, you know, your passion. What it is that you really want to do is empowering. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's also like not letting society dictate what you yes. should be doing mm -hmm. as a woman. Like. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, you should have kids by this age or you should do this by this totally. age. If you're a girl boss, you set your own rules. You don't let those pressures get to you and you just live life the way you want ah, to. I love that. True. Set your own rules. <laughs> oh, so my true. goodness. I mean, you know, being a girl boss to me is being your true, authentic self. Yes, yes. Saying so this much. is who I am. You know, I believe in myself. Take it or leave it. You know, so anybody out there that uh, plans on being a girl boss, you can do it and you can set your own path and do it your way. Yes. So, ladies, let's get into episode one Woo! yes oh my god <laughs> what, what what did you guys think well okay so i really sort of fell in love with sophia in yeah. that i know she knows first of all she's listening to her own voice yeah and that i think is so hard because society really tries to drown that out of you right. and she's so committed to i know that this isn't right working in a shoe store and living with my folks and you know all that she knows it's not right but she doesn't know what the answer is so she's committed even though life is throwing her curveball after curveball she's getting tickets she's getting sick <laughs> she's i mean she doesn't know how it's going to shake out but she knows to stay committed to her own voice and and that really endeared me to this character. I don't know. Right. How about you guys? I, I completely agree with that. I truly love that because anytime you're doing something in life, it's most important to listen to yourself mm -hmm. and not have yeah. anybody else influence you because you're going to end up doing something that you do not have love for. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to want to do it anymore. Totally. And I think this is all what episode one was about, is mm -hmm. finding about what she truly has a love for and what she truly wants to do and not settling for anything that, you know, her heart doesn't pump for. Yeah, I feel, like, yes. I feel like I'm the only one who's going to be kind of a buzzkill and say, I liked it. I didn't love it. Yeah. I thought that there were parts of it where it felt like they were making Sophia like this caricature of herself. Like mm -hmm. she's too rebellious. And it, it just felt like almost cartoonish to mm -hmm. me. Uh -huh. And there were parts of it that were... Uh, kind of like young adulty, like where it feels like one of those like high school mm. cliches, even though she's 23 years old. Mm. Um, but I feel like once we start watching more and more episodes, it'll get better and better. And maybe it started out this way because she is in a place where she's stuck 
and she hasn't found herself, maybe that's why everything feels so, like, you know, so much exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe it'll get better later on. But I, I wasn't in love with it. I thought it was... I thought it was good, but I wasn't like, wow, this is the best show ever. Well, you you know what? I think, it, you know, it's cool because everybody's going to see it differently. But the one thing that I don't want us for, to forget is where we were when we were 22, 23 like, years old. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we yes. were trying to figure out everything. everything. Like, oh, my God, what should I do? It seemed like everything was going wrong. All that you know is that you don't want to conform. That, mm-hmm. you know, she said, hey, school is not for me, and that is okay. You know, and, and she I said, love that. I exactly. Love that so she's much. sticking to what she loves. And I have to uh, commend them because I think they did a really good job job with casting mm-hmm. uh, Sophie Sophie is a uh, you know actress Britt Roberson I and think that look, she yeah. she's like spot yeah, on yeah, look yeah. wise mm-hmm. everything yeah. um so so le- you know let's talk about uh adulthood you know let's talk about what that was like for her and um and what you guys think about that well so I think that's so funny that they're even talking about adulthood because when you're 23 mm-hmm. you're like mm-hmm. so far from adulthood I think and so I know so many people in their 40s and 50s and they so have not figured out adulthood that it's amazing to me that that she's so obsessed at 23 that she's afraid she's gonna like her dreams are gonna go to die if she takes a random job here or there so Mm -hmm. I'm really amazed with the character that at such a young age she knows that she doesn't want what everybody else is offering up right and she's so committed despite the fact that no one's with her and she's kind of a loner at this point like no one's got her game so you know adulthood for her is really figuring out it seems to be the job of her life but I think what we're going to find later down the series is adulthood is so much more than that it's Mm -hmm. not just the job it's how you handle the job and how you handle life and I think I can totally relate to Sophia because at 23 years old it's like you do put pressure on yourself because it's like I know what I want in my life I may not know how to get there but I know what I want out of life Mm -hmm. and I think for Sophia she knows what she wants but she doesn't necessarily know how to get there I think it's something else Mm -hmm. I think it's she knows what she doesn't want Mm -hmm. but she's not Mm -hmm. quite sure exactly about what she wants she wants a lifestyle for sure but she knows she doesn't want to be held down and that's what's guiding her now I think and I know I I, I, I agree (laughs) and I totally relate to it because well I'm 25 yeah so 20 20, I can't feel like yeah when I was 23 because that was only a couple of years ago yes that does not count (laughs) but but I totally relate to it because I feel like I did know what I didn't want and there were there was part of me that was lying to myself to kind of fit this mold of what I thought I should be doing. So I did have a nine to five job, and I was like, yeah, well, this like I I got promoted, and I and I took another job because it paid really well, right. and I I got in a job that I didn't think fit my personality at all. It looked good on paper. It was a really high title. I was doing like these things that were that felt really adult like, mm-hmm. but I was miserable. I was like, this wow. is not for me. I don't want this, and it it reached a point where I was like, how much of this is worth it? Like, mm-hmm. yes, I'm doing something that's respectable. I'm working so long where I'm plugged into my phone all the time, nonstop, no matter what I'm doing. I'm always thinking about the next meeting or the next deal I have to close or the next mm-hmm. sales pitch. I'm like, this isn't me at all. I need something that's creative. I need something that's not restricted. Right. And I decided, you know what? I'm so over this. I'm not going to live my life this way. Life is way too short to right, do something totally. where you feel like a zombie every day. Right. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. At, at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that I didn't want to do that. I quit. It was like the worst job ever. And I was jobless for like six months. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I want to be an entertainment host. I'm going to make this happen. I have no idea how, but yeah, I'm going to do, do it. And then I feel like everything started falling into place once I became more honest you with took myself. Leap. And once I, I took a leap of faith, I was like, I was honest with myself. I knew that I had to be doing something yeah. creative. And I started with After Buzz. Then I landed a job at TMZ. And I'm slowly, okay. you know. Come here, girl. Yes. 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 We had yes. to yes. celebrate yes. those moments. Yes. Was, yes. And it was very exciting for me. I was like, this. If everything felt so unreal, like mm. me going to red carpet events and interviewing celebrities. I'm like, how are all these things here. opening up? Mm. I'm like, oh, because I'm actually being honest with myself. Right. And I'm not doing what looks good. I'm doing what I want to do. Mm. Regardless of my family thinking it's unrealistic right. or mm-hmm. exactly. what society thinks, yeah, yeah. I'm doing what I want and right. I feel like that. 
like, yeah. is the girl? And I know D- Dominique, you had a, a point. You yeah, to I thought that right? was really funny because she said she was at her job and on paper it was the best job ever, yeah. right? But she just wasn't happy inside. And I feel like for me, I can totally re- relate to Sophia because here she is at her job and she's just girl. like not caring about I'm it. Totally like she clearly not into it. doesn't care. Where she wants to be. And I felt like I was just like her. I quit job after job. I literally had almost thirty jobs in one year, and then I went a whole year without doing nothing. And that year when I did nothing, that was the most profound year for me because as a creative person, you need that space. Exactly. You need that space yes. to that figure time it out. But you know what else yeah. you need? Another thing that you need is you need balance. Yeah. And speaking of balance, sometimes balance creates distractions oh. and distractions means boys. boys. So you guys already know where I'm going with this. Yes. Her relationship yeah. with Shane, the drummer. Yeah, what yeah. do you guys think? Is it's so a cute. relationship? Because it felt like a hookup to me. And then it became, towards the end of episode well, two, sta- I mean, it, it was be honest. Something. Everything it was sometimes starts off as a hookup, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. That's how some things start off. Not everybody, yeah, but some things. She well, said girl, she's point. something else. She said she's not into a one-night stand. So that sort exactly. of gave me the idea that maybe there was going to be something. <laughs> and then when I saw him say to her, oh, you know, I like you. And she was like, <laughs> right. I'm playing all cool. <laughs> but she was kind of give us, giving us some foreshadowing of what's going to happen when she's like, you know, you're going to figure that out and you and I was like okay so this is all about her figuring it out in theory and that's what we see a lot throughout this whole entire episode one and two is her trying to figure figure it out out. now one thing that she has to figure out right oh my god (laughs) (laughs) one thing girl tell me that's the story of all of our lives one thing that we all have tried to figure out at one point in time is what am I going to do after you've gotten fired you know so let's talk about how Sophia's character handles getting fired at the shoe store I think she handled it well. She was actually a little bit of a butthole, but can see it, it could, she could have cared a little bit more. But um, I think at that time her mom was over it. She was like, you know, I'm out. I'm gonna take this sandwich with me, even though it's yes, not right. mine. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. eat it on the way out. Um, but after a while, it took her a while to sit in, and I think that's when that dinner with her father came into play. Right, and that which was is a, a very, very, very awesome important scene. time mm-hmm. because you know her father. The first thing a parent does is they want to coddle you a little bit. They yep. see their child. They're going through some distress everything's not necessarily connecting because sometimes parents don't understand I have to bump my head to figure this out but the first thing that he says is why don't you just move home so when he said that for you what, what, what did you guys think it reminded me so much. I just finished covering girls, <laughs> and there was an episode where uh, Marnie is like, "Ugh, like I'm getting evicted. This is happening. Yeah, right. I have to go back home." And it's like, it's almost like the most humiliating thing because you don't want to admit that, "Oh, I'm I'm not help. okay. I need help." You right. want to be like, "No, I'm not gonna move back home." Especially for someone like Sophia's character yeah. who's so independent mm-hmm. and so and doesn't yeah. want to have to report to someone, <laughs> doesn't like rules doesn't like being ordered around mm-hmm. or like getting told what to do. She likes to live by her own rules. That I, that would be a disaster. Like <laughs> I can't even, even imagine her living at home. It's even worse for her, I feel like, because yeah. the, one of the people closest to her yep. is basically saying to her, I don't believe in you. Yep. Yeah. And that's exactly. so hard. Everybody knows that yes. feeling. And it, it crushes you, but it also motivates you to propel forward, you that's, know? Well, like, that's why she leaves. I'm going to show you with more her, than I can tell you. Yeah, she, and when, and she when, leaves with that stolen rug under her arm. But I like, don't, I'm, I'm, I'm I, down for it. I get what you're saying by, like, he's saying I don't believe in her, but... I feel like it's it's more one of those things where parents do believe in you and they want the best for you, but what they think is the best for you isn't necessarily what's best, best for you. It's what they you. want they for, you. for you. Yeah, no, no, it's no, not I'm, what you yeah, want for yourself. But I'm, I'm not saying that he doesn't mm-hmm. believe in her. I'm yeah. saying that she thinks he doesn't right. believe in her. That's because her, her thought that's process. Because yeah. she's kind of down at that moment because and she, she doesn't says, have a game plan. And, no, she, she, and she, she is all over the place. I mean, mm-hmm. like, she like, just got evicted. She's stealing. She got a rug out of the park. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's acting like a child. And if I were, if I had a kid that was doing that, I was like, no, like, you move in with me. I would do the same exact thing. Right. And so I'd be like, what's things. going on? Right. Oh, you shouldn't and, be living on your you own. So Save money. Exactly. Live with me until you can ma- mature mm-hmm. and figure it out. But oh, I feel like this yes. is easier for her to mature now right. because now she's relying on herself to make rent as opposed to having a parent bail her out and pay her mm-hmm. rent to her. And when it comes to adversity, I think sometimes adversity inspires us. Yeah, and we completely saw that pushes you. within the, the end of this episode yeah. where she had so much adversity, so many people, you know, telling her in a sense, in yeah. so many words yep. that I don't I believe, believe in you. you. And then she has an epiphany. She had that mm-hmm. epiphany. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about this call. epiphany and, and what that wake up call was like and how it inspired uh, some of you. Yeah, absolutely. That scene when she like went back home and she's like crying in front of the door, her legs spread 
it open. You see RuPaul. Oh my God, you want to get in She ripped the pants. No makeup. was fabulous. He was my favorite cameo yeah. in yeah. the episode. Yeah. I feel like he had the best lines. He, he brought the best yes. comic relief. Yeah. He's my favorite part yeah, of the yeah. episode. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Go get sure. your man, girl. Yeah. He was like yeah, right on great. time. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that because it's like, I had that that conversation she had with my her dad. I had that same conversation with my dad. My dad was uh-huh. like, "Girl, you're all over the place. What are you doing?" And it wasn't like he didn't believe in me, but it was like I yeah. don't see how it's going to come into how fruition. Is work? You know how is this going to right. work? So it's like for me, I had to go take myself and say, "Look." You gonna have to figure out a game plan. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I felt like that was the moment she went home. Yeah. She put her jacket online, yeah. and then she seen yeah. the biz like booming, and she had like, oh, it I came can't to do her, this. and she didn't know nobody. You know, she she took her own camera, yeah. took a photo of herself, and yeah. put it up on the internet. So, I don't need nobody. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. What I love about this is, for me, I call this the bingo effect. Yeah. When your passion meets your skill set, oh, you're like 120 percent of yourself. And you know, who knew if she was gonna make money? She had no idea. Yep. But what she knew is that this felt right, yep. and mm-hmm. so much up until that point felt wrong. Mm. And she was strong enough to say, like, I'm not going with it because I don't know why, but this isn't right. And then this felt yeah. right. You know, she picked out that jacket right. and she was like, hello, boss. So yes. she knew it, like, yes. this is me, you know. Yes. And that was really inspiring to, for me to see her, like, click. Mm. And when you listen to your own voice, mm. you oh, can feel it. Say that it. again. Can yes, you say that, that one more time? So when you do what? <laughs> when you listen to your own voice, you can really feel it. Uh, and then you know yep. when it's going and you've got to flow. Yep. And yeah. when, then the life is with you. And like you say, God is everywhere. Life oh, is with you. Oh, my goodness. And you know the great thing about epiphanies is that, you know, even though we have an epiphany, it doesn't mean that everything that is, is going to come together mm-hmm. all will not necessarily be revealed to you. Sometimes you have mm-hmm. moments where you're like, kiss my ass world. Yeah, I love that. So yeah. speaking of kiss my yeah. ass world, that's how uh, episode two starts off. Yes. And yeah. I feel like we've all had that moment. Hell, I'm having a moment like that right now. When you're on the high and no oh, one can my Oh my goodness, when you're on a high, even when you're on a low. low so let's yeah. talk about uh, episode two, uh, Kiss My Ass World. Yes, I definitely feel like it opens up, like you say, um, it's that feeling where it's like you've been put on this earth and you know what you came, you know what you're, you know what you came to do, now it's time to do it. You know, right. it's a fearless, nobody can't tell me nothing type yeah. of attitude. I feel yeah. like she definitely had that in the beginning. But then it came the everything coming down okay what I'm gonna do how I'm gonna sell more clothes you know that jacket right. did good but how am I gonna get some, gonna some find, different you know? pieces and where pieces. am I gonna find 2164 oh my stars. goodness right. saved up. listen <laughs> she scraped up 2164 that was all she had and you know what she did she went she shop made it happen. Oh, okay. She did that too. She did that too. Well, that was a part of making it happen because yeah. she needed that book. So she was like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this book at all costs. Okay, so for me, we're right back to adulthood. Yeah. So she has a vision for herself now because she's found that jacket, mm-hmm. but man, is she her own worst enemy. Yeah. She so is. she's like making enemies left and right. She's stealing. She can't handle her emotions. She's kind of a jerk. To that poor lady who I have to say what did a great job. I wrote it down here. <laughs> Carol. Irene White. Oh, Carol. Right. Carol. Played by Irene White. Mm-hmm. Carol, the shoe store lady. I mean, she's just like trying to keep it together. I mean, poor Carol. So she's poor kind Carol. of a jerk. She, she, was, she was frazzled. She yeah. was Carol was frazzled. <laughs> well, her sandwich was taken. My God. So but that's the part that felt so fake and inauthentic really? to me. Was like. I feel like no normal person, if they're in that situation getting fired, no one's going to be like, okay, I'm just going to take a bite out of this and do that. It's like she was asking them to get fired. I think that says a lot about her character, though, because she just doesn't give a damn. You know, she's going to do whatever the hell she wants when she wants to. Well, And she knew that was her damn sandwich. And she's angry. Immaturity. Like, like she's immature. She says to her dad, I'm pissed off. Yep. And I don't know exactly where that anger comes from, but I will say, since I'm a little bit older than the three of you, (laughs) I've had a lot of interns in my days uh-huh. and uh yeah i see i see her this kind of attitude i see it in people in their yeah. young 20s yeah. sort of like i don't have to listen to you i don't have a boss i don't rebel uh, it's, it's sad. Energy. Yeah. it's misguided energy that's totally all that's it's misguided it. energy that's it, right. that's yeah. it. but yes. you want to tell you uh some misguided energy that we uh yes. saw revealed was the hernia now that was not misguided energy she kept she was bumping into things yes. she was falling Damn. out it was let's awful. Talk about, let's talk about that hernia. You it know what I gross. thought was karma. really funny out of this? Bad karma? Bad karma, for sure. She actually said, um, oh, it's a bad me. razor bump. And I'm like, she, it was, I just thought that was so funny. I was like, she thought that I thought it was. was like an STD at first before they revealed like, it was a hernia. I was I like, she, was. I she spooned like with this tumor. guy. Like, I didn't know. I, I was did too. Like, yeah. that, like, I was like, this is a small alien. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I was like, that's what she get for spooning. She spooned this Shane guy after she met him and she saw him over there, you know, performing. But the and fact of the matter is she had that and she didn't have insurance to get it checked out. Yeah. Right. That's the yeah. goes well, that responsibility you was talking about. Remember? Yeah, and what 
I, for me, the big life lesson here is that life throws you curveballs, yeah. and you just have to be willing to catch it or roll dodge it or play it or roll with the punches <laughs> or throw right. the punches. And that, to me, we're back to the same topic again, but that, to me, is really adulthood, is you got to know how to dodge and weave and play yeah. and duck, and she doesn't have any of that. She has the vision, but she does not have the skill set to right. kind of keep it together. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and that's true. But I feel like you can always develop skills. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. a vision is hard to totally. just naturally have. You know, if you have the vision, having getting the skills to get there is so much easier than not right. having the vision but having the skills. You can if you don't get in your own way. You know, you're always seeing people trip yeah. themselves up. Right. You're so your own worst you're enemy. You're your own that's, worst that's enemy, which is, which is why to me this series is interesting because you're saying like sometimes you thought it was inauthentic and they were kind of yeah. overdoing uh -huh. it. I'm really waiting to see this character character arc Evolve. of her yeah. if she can like keep it together totally you know? that's really funny what you just said that's the essence of us right now mm -hmm. in our life what we're trying to oh do my. out here we have the vision but right. we don't know everything else so that's really great that you point that <laughs> right. out right and then you know the thing about know. you know being on this journey is that we meet people along the way that doubt us mm. you know that tell us what we can't do that tell us we don't have the experience that tell mm -hmm. us that you know we don't have what it takes and that's what we saw with with the thrift store owner yeah. you know this guy that's been in yeah. this thrift store for lord knows how yeah. long yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and just because maybe he's lost yeah. all his dreams along the way now he wants to be negative and yeah. and try and put yeah. that yeah. negative okay. energy so on okay. Sophia okay. Okay. Oh, okay the people who are jaded who okay. don't make he's it so jaded. Okay. Just because you lost your dream don't mean I'm going to die. Okay, okay. 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 But I gotta, I gotta like stand up for the old people here. So, okay, he might be a little bit jaded, but he's got, there's some points there. He's telling her the okay. truth, like, you don't no, know what I'm you're about, doing. And she's like, oh, I do what I do. But we yeah. need and those people. We need all, people like that. He mentioned all the key things. things. Like, you don't know about right. customer service. Right. Right. What happens when people return the Financing, stuff. Financing. You know how yeah. hard it is to even find merchandise in the first More time. You think you stumble upon one thing. You make a huge, like, thing out of it. How can you make that a sustainable venture and right. it was so funny because she she took parts that she wanted to listen to but she wasn't gonna no, let them no. know oh, instead no. she gonna steal oh, that no. book because <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. she was all about like oh this is not a business i don't do business this is lifestyle <laughs> yo, and she's all thinking like dollar dollar bills y'all yo, yo, uh, <laughs> but bill. you know life you life has its responsibilities right so she's still trying to like figure that all out <laughs> right that was so funny but i think i think that's what i love about her character i love the fact that she's just like you know what you're not gonna tell me what i can't do okay. i love her rebellious oh, yeah. attitude and i think to be a girl boss that's what yeah. you have to have right. some of that you mm -hmm. have to have that attitude yep. you have to be willing to yeah. do whatever the hell it takes even if it means jumping into a freaking garbage can <laughs> oh, yeah. and eating some some bread out of Ew. a garbage yeah. stealing a book that's a yeah. thing by the way everything people do dumpster dive and it's like a it's a thing it is a thing. Yeah, like you can actually like sustain. survive. Is this like a yeah. northern thing? You can or survive like... off of doing it, and you can actually find like good quality stuff. I don't know how people do it, <laughs> but I've listened to interviews with people, yes, it's and I'm true. like, there are too, actual yeah. like professional dumpster divers. Yeah. I, you know, wow. I can believe that because yeah. I always wonder at the end of night of the restaurant, what are y'all doing with all that unused food? Like y'all yeah, throwing it away. away. Yeah, it's yeah. good yeah. solid food. You just got to be on time. Like you know, the restaurant's closing at ten. <laughs> I'm make sure I get to that garbage can at nine fifty five. I actually like that dumpster scene because there's a point of pride in her voice when she says there ain't no shame in this game I love and it. what I loved about that is that she's really living life on her own terms you know for everybody it's not making money for some people it's just the fact that I do what I want to do and I've got the freedom to do, do it, it and right. that's empowering so I don't you know, know freedom what? it is yeah. freedom if, if we want to draw freedom. some type of uh, connection and link if you think about bosses yep. all over the world one of the things that they all had in common was that they were fearless and yep. they all thought outside the box and they live life according to their own standards yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that is one of the things that we really, really want to encourage all of the girls yes. out there to do. Yes. You know, um, well, and anyone who's it. ever become successful has to. been denied at some point. Oh Most, of, at least ninety nine percent of people. Like my <laughs> my idol, my inspiration, J K Rowling, the people, the person who created all these Harry Potter books on oh, my phone case right she's not a girl boss. I mean, she was struggling. Oh, uh -huh. She had nothing. Yeah. She has oh. a great she, quote. She was a single mom, and she still made it because she kept trying. She was turned down by every Everybody. single publisher wow. imaginable. Yeah, she was. And now they probably think that they were idiots not taking her on because she's one of the richest right. people one of the richest female authors ever. Yes. Right, absolutely. But she has a great quote, and I'm butchering it now, of course, because I didn't know we'd be talking about J.K. Rowling, so I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> but one of the reasons she feels that she is so successful is because she failed so many times. Yes. Right. And she just kept on getting up, and I think that's a girl boss. Mm -hmm. and you, was, you go down, but you get up. And right. I was going to say, actually, that's what it really is in life, anything. Your favorite person, whoever you look up to, they have a story to tell. You're not mm -hmm. going to look up to somebody that don't didn't come from anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. who had mm -hmm. it all to begin with, because 
right. make it work. You like know, Paris Hilton. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> Even though she's super cool, but yeah, you get Kidding. the point. But you have to have that rags to riches story. Oh my you know, that's what's going to build your character mm-hmm. and build who you are. And you know what? Life isn't linear, so it's nope. not like it's you not. just keep going up. Yeah, you go up and then I you go down. I was thinking that and too. Then you go up right. and you go down. Like she, she said that too. She mentioned Sophia mentioned that in in the Netflix thing. She yep. was like, you know what? I feel like I had this epiphany, and mm. now I have this growth on yep. here and I have right, this. Yeah. So it's like yeah. even though you reach this amazing conclusion in yep. your mind and you get this right. vision, something is always going to challenge you, you hit with right. and it's going to be like, can you overcome this challenge? Yep. How right. badly do you want this? And right. that's adulthood to me. Yeah. That's yep. what right. says, yep. like, I got this. Yep. And it yep. teaches you to think outside the box. You yep. know, a great example of, of Sophia's character thinking outside the box was when she said, you know what, I only have $21.64. I've been to every single yeah. thrift store, mm-hmm. yeah. and I have not been able to find anything I am going to research rich influencers yeah, who right. died. Yep. Who's yeah. going to get their clothes? Yep. I thought that was genius. Mm-hmm. Was like, dope. who thinks of that? that A girl dope. boss does. Yeah. What did you What did you ladies think about that? And she had her yeah. old school Mac notebook. Did y'all see that? <laughs> Everybody it. wanted those ones back Loved in the day. And her, did you funny. see her cell phone, yes. too? <laughs> I paid attention to that. I was <laughs> like, I like that they kept that detail. <laughs> no okay, yeah. I was more right. focused on the red pants. That was, Those were all oh, amazing. Everything was yeah. awesome. I thought that was really funny how she actually um, really tried to take the Chanel clothes from the other lady yes, who came there yes, early. Yes. And the lady says, don't you see there's an adult woman <laughs> in front of you? <laughs> I thought that was interesting. But, yeah, at the end of the day, she did what she had to do to get some clothes, and she walked out with winter merchandise. And that's, in right, a way, that's yeah. grand in itself because if it's summer season, you're still ahead of the game. Right. So. And you know what? Mm-hmm. Throughout throughout both episodes, we've seen her character go through ups and downs. Yeah. And then at the very end of episode two, she says, my life has got to be better. Yeah. Ladies, at this point in time, you know, I think we've all done a really good job revealing some personal things about ourselves. But how exactly uh, can you personally relate to that statement, my life has got to be better? Oh, God. Where do I start? Right. I mean, there's so many times, <laughs> it right? Because right. it's always mm-hmm. up and down. There's so... it's And in fact, sometimes I even get nervous when everything is looking great because mm. I'm like, oh, man, I'm about to get smacked upside the head. Because, mm. yeah. you know, life is usually a mixed bag. Right. Um, and so what, what I thought about that is, you know, what was interesting to me is less her reaction because sometimes life does just dump on you and it's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But what was more interesting to me was Shane's reaction when mm-hmm. he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and he was like... Uh, Basically, what his body movement said to me was, basically, I never ask myself that question. I never think about it. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the difference between a boss, I'll say girl boss Mm. here, because she's taking life head on. Yep, Most she, people don't. Yep. Most people don't ask content, for much. They, yep, don't, yeah. they don't think about it. They're like, okay, today it sucks, tomorrow it's good. I'm just going to kind of go my mm-hmm. way. And Coast. Shane, sweet as he is, he's just like not asking himself yeah. these big life questions, but she wants more. And that's, and that's fine and that's okay for too. some people. Like some people right. are happy living in the countryside, yeah. like having their own life that, that's aside from, yeah. it's not like super ambitious, but they're happy. And I feel like the point of life is to be happy. So yep. if that makes you happy, all the power to you but if you're that ambitious and you're thinking of all these things i mean my thought is the when you're unhappy or you're sad or you're frustrated it's because you have a certain expectation yep. yes. and whatever events are going on in your yep. life it's not meeting that expectation yep. mm-hmm. and what some people do is they'll lower their expectations sure. and expect less and live a life of mediocrity and they don't get what they want because they've lowered their expectations so they don't get disappointed but there are some people who keep their expectations high and they just keep working harder yep. and harder to meet that expectation no matter how much life is not matching up with what they want yeah. so and I think that is a very important distinction and I think that that's where I'm at in life as well mm-hmm. like I feel like I'm at a point and I, I I like this at 23 at her age so that's why I relate to Sophia so much I feel like we have so much in common it's like when I was in school I was studying something in school and I just realized that hey this, I'm not created for this you know but I also yeah. know I have so much more to give out of life there's so much more purpose that's inside of me I just have to catch up to that point right. mm-hmm. and I feel like Sophia knows and I that wish school teaches you teaches that and that. it doesn't yeah. 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 it doesn't like and what is your purpose I feel like there's no college yeah. mm-hmm. unless you go to a, a trade school and you know what you yeah. want there's no college that teaches you exactly what, what your you purpose is or what you want that's like soul searching on your own right. so like that's what, time with your own is about one of the very few benefits of getting older is mm-hmm. you have that benefit of time mm-hmm. yeah because you can't really rush that answer. Mm-hmm. There really, I don't right. know if there is a book or a school for that. You kind of got to just feel it out. And that's a question of time. School right. Of it's definitely, life. It's definitely, definitely a question of time. Question of time. And, and just to jump in here, uh, mm-hmm. ladies, I think that thank you all so much for sharing mm-hmm. and drawing connections. And I think for me, uh, I, just like Dominique mm-hmm. said, I, I'm 
at this point in my life as well you know uh i've been a a, a girl boss in my own way starting yes. my own company it is an emotional That's roller coaster you, you yeah. know four years ago i started a company a media company and yeah. you know what the thing is is that it, you go through these these phases where it's good and then it's bad and then it's good again and then it's bad and then it's like oh my god what am i gonna do yeah. but the one thing that you can't do is you can't give up nope. no matter what it will get better it has to get better but the first place to start is with positive thinking yep. and i'm so saying true. that to you guys right now <laughs> because yes. I literally had this conversation today you know we all took that leap of faith yep. we came to la we said we're gonna yep. come out here that's we're gonna right. follow yeah. our dreams and in following your dreams it may not be exactly how you dreamed it to be. Yep. I'm going to say that again. Yes. And following your dreams, it may not okay. always be how you dreamed it to be, but what you can't do is you can't give up because there are going to be things that are going to come mm. that you're not even going to see coming your way. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, ladies, and that's with, with the inspiration. Because <laughs> we've been doing that. We've been doing that. It's like a group therapy session <laughs> right now. everything. But that's what about being a girl boss. So, ladies, let's go ahead and get started with predictions because we will be back ah, next week. Okay. 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 All right. Now, so, what do you think? Oh, child. Have you liked the lights? Uh, is it my first? What's going on here? It's my first show. All right. Uh, so wow. we're, we're just going to predict what happens in yes. next episode, I guess. Yeah. Tonight. What, what, okay. What I, think, huh, I definitely think you're going to see something takes place with Shane and Sophia. Um, Shane, it's so funny because they actually said he, he thought it was a baby or something that she was yes. talking about. Um, but I, growth. I think that she may get a small part-time job just to help her out far as insurance wise so she can take care of her medical needs mm-hmm. but go even harder with you know of course nasty girl or nasty girl vintage at that time yes um i think that she's going to start looking at life a little bit more serious and if her father do ever step in he's going to step in to help her mm-hmm. money wise i think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better mm-hmm. and i think she thinks she's hit rock bottom but she has not hit rock bottom yet. <laughs> yeah. I, no i think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better and that's yeah. when we're really going to see the character development yeah mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i love that i feel like in ti- times that are tough will show you who you really are absolutely because anyone can be like an amazing awesome person yeah. when they're happy but what are they like oh, when, when they're, they're sad and there's also another meme that i love is <laughs> you can really figure out what a true person is like mm. when they don't in- have internet access <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when the rage comes. That's perfect yeah. for millennials. Yeah, perfect, perfect for millennials. Um, I predict. Um, I think that it's really great that Shane is in her life because I think that sometimes when we are low, we do need somebody to turn to. Mm. That balance that we talked about. So I agree with you guys. I think that their relationship is going to continue to grow. Um, I think that she's going to get into this place because I think one thing about millennials is that we want everything to happen right now. It's true. And I think that she is going to get a little success when it comes to money. I think she's going to be able to pay some of her bills. Mm. But then I don't think she's going to be able to... um, she's, she's, She's not gonna know how to spend it wisely mm. and I think that's going back to kind of like what you said where it's gonna get worse and I think that's how it's gonna get worse because she's 23 years old she's yeah. gonna get all this money and she's yeah. not, not gonna know what the heck to do with it not yeah. to mention that she doesn't get along with very many people very no. well so yeah. she's got that to learn too <laughs> yeah. oh she's she made cross a-hole. some bridges that she burned or yeah, you know, yeah. something like that that's right. although she does have a great best friend I love her best friend <laughs> right. I have to say that did y'all hear the rumor? Um, they said that the best friend was actually inspired by... So, Nasty Girl first employee, I forgot, Christina, Christina something. Mm-hmm. She actually found this employee off on of Craigslist. Craigslist. Yeah. What? So, yes, yeah, yes, her yeah. first employee, she found That's off of awesome. Craigslist. So, they saying that her, the, the first employee, the, this character named Annie, like, is loosely based off of... Oh, that's Christina so dope. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Well, I guess, that. guess what, guys? The great thing about having all these predictions is that we can come back and talk to you about it next week, guys. So, again, we want to thank you so, so very yes. much for tuning in. We will be here every single Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And don't forget, you can live chat us as well. Um, I'm Candice. You can find me on Instagram at Miss Ken Marie, and you can find me on Twitter at Sweet Kendra TV, and my lovely co-host. <laughs> and my name is Mina Wahab, rhymes with kebab. You can find me on Instagram at Mina Makes Magic. And I'm Dominique Sarita, and you can buzz me at Instagram and Twitter at Dominique Sarita. And I'm Elizabeth Alfano. You can find me at Dinner Party CHGO on Instagram and Twitter, and at Elizabeth Alfano on Facebook. And next week, people, we're bringing the wine. So yes. come back and join us. <laughs> yes, we are bringing the wine and so much more, guys. Thank you again for tuning in. Later, Later. best friends. Later, Later best friends. Bye. <laughs>
from executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. <laughs>